Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome back to basic boat building walkthrough from the depths version as done by me. So, I haven't touched this uh, little craft at all since part one of this, I guess, part two part series. I hope it's only going to be two part series. I haven't set my timer, excuse me. But while I set my timer, let's go over what uh, we've managed to do already. So, we've got the weapon set, the hull's done, the engine's done, the AI's done. All that stuff is done. We've got some weapons set in, some very ugly weapons. But, uh, I didn't get to finish talking about weapons uh, last time. So, since we're here, we're just going to quickly, and I mean very quickly, go over missiles. Because missiles are easy. So, the reason, like, we probably don't have enough ammunition on this thing to have, uh steady stream of missiles. So what I'm going to do instead is just put one in. So boop. So exactly one missile and trust me one missile these days is plenty and everything missile related is expensive by the way. So here and we're gonna put a connector and then we're gonna put a identify friend or foe. I don't know why this isn't worked into missiles just by default because you almost always need one. I guess sometimes you don't, but never mind. Wait, 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 wait. I don't need that. I have this. Is it connected? Yes, it is. Does it have a gantry? No, it does not. One, two, three, and now we're going to stick a medium gantry aerodynamic hatch in there. Right, so the missile silo is sitting right next to where Rambot usually sits. That is fine. We're actually going to lower uh, this thing right here because I like the seat to be lowered. Do 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 and char and slope, slope, slope. Okay, so there's a missile already and. Almost always I use radar guided missiles rather than infrared because infrared is very unreliable. It's uh, you can see right here. It's got detected signals heat, only got a 60 degree cone in front of it, minimal signal threshold 200, and it drops off very very sharply with range. So at 500 meters, the signal strength modifier it's already at 67 percent, and it's like I don't know. This, this infrared is not very good. I don't understand. Uh, I don't really know what it's good for these days. It used to be very good for smart bombs because, uh, like, just uh, it couldn't be detected by munition warners if it had no thruster or no radar or no, bah, sorry, no active radar seeker. But now missiles can be detected no matter what. So I don't know what infrared's good for anymore, really. And so we're gonna have that and. We're going to have Explosive Frag. It's very nice. And we're also going to have APN Guidance, because I like APN Guidance. And a one turn, because I also like one turns. And Activation Delay 2. Just because. And what else, what else? Yeah, that'll do for now. Then we'll stick a Weapon Controller in front of it. And thankfully, this does not need a failsafe at all. I'm going to maximum range to gauge. It's going to be something quite modest, something like that. And below minus 10. Setting controls on your local weapon controls is a good idea. And in fact, I'm going to do that right now with the other things we have. God, this is a rushed cram cannon I've done right here. So, maximum range to engage. We're going to put that as. That was not right. Put that as 1,800, and minimum altitude to engage is going to be negative 30, because sometimes if you put this at negative 10, it's uh, not going to work very well. And this guy will be similar, except this is going to be negative 10, and this is going to be max range. Okay, okay. So let's save our basic boat. You can see the cost has uh, shot up a little bit since uh, we've added a missile on here. 
And so like, while we're talking, while we're just uh, rounding out these things, this cram cannon is too friggin' tall. I have no excuse for that. We're just gonna make this a little bit more pretty. I could do this later, but I don't feel like it. I feel like doing it right now. That's not much prettier at all, but it is better than nothing. Do do do. Do, do, do. Is this going to look horrible? Yes and no. It does look pretty horrible. But that's okay. Because we can fix this. Or can fix this Charlie. I don't even know if that's a quote from somewhere. It should be if it isn't. Do 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 Dude, that is pretty dreadful. That is slightly less dreadful. Good, it looks fat. And this one is going to be... Even simpler, you'll be pleased to know. It's gonna be this. at these ugly guns. That took way less time than I thought it would, actually. Uh, um, excuse me? There we go. Thank you. Okay, so what's next? So, what we have? We have a cram, we have an APS, we have a single missile. Let's just test fire all three of these things. Cool, away they go. And so what's next? Well, in order for this uh, thing to detect and shoot at anything, it needs detection. So... We are going to stick a very rudimentary superstructure on here and stick some sensors on it. Do, 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 do. Now, when you build your superstructure, the temptation always is to make it out of light uh, materials that uh, won't make your ship too top heavy, and that's actually a good idea. But at the same time, you want it durable enough so that if it does get hit, and it will get hit, it doesn't just disintegrate, because your sensors and stuff will be attached to it, and you want to keep them. They are important. So I'm going to... what am I going to do? I'm going to do... This, to start off with. And I'm going to do... This, and this. I don't know why my machine is lagging today. It just is. It is not cool. But what can you do? Alrighty, so... This is not going to be the best uh, superstructure in the world. I make no claims to being good at superstructure. I infamously did not believe in them for the longest time. But now I kind of do. Why are we leaning? Stop leaning. That's annoying. That'll have to come later, the propulsion parasite. What was I trying to accomplish here? I don't know, so... Let's go detection equipment. Ooh. So we're going to have a passive radar, and then we're going to have a camera, because cameras are amazing. And then you know what we're going to do instead of that... Uh, I don't know why this is lagging so much. It shouldn't be. This is not particularly strenuous, what's happening right here. Yeah, it's just because the room's hot. That's probably it, and nothing else. 
And then we're just going to stick... Because once you have the camera, you want stuff that can detect off it, so I'm going to stick, just for giggles. Radars. And then some trackers. So I'm going to stick a camera tracker. Do, 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 do. Dude, stop it. Laggy thing. Laggy game. Knock it off. Okay. So now we have detection up there. We have our main detection. We have passive detection. Uh, more main detection and two trackers. This setup usually works pretty well. Just to start off with, just hit auto adjust on these two things. That usually does the trick. If that doesn't work, uh, the main thing you have to remember if you're using hit scan weapons like particle cannons or lasers, set this to minimum values because they don't need to lead the target at all so just set it to that and they'll hit every single time assuming they're accurate so we'll do that but uh, we don't have enough processing power so let's go fix that where's our AI? our AI is over here did I leave space for this? I don't think I did do 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 thankfully I can extend it. I don't know where I can extend it. Hmm. What you can do, if you don't want to blow up your AI compartment, is this. What was I doing? So, just here, because why not? We're going to stick some connectors. Ideally, you should plan out ahead of time how much processing power you need. But as I've said before, planning ahead is not my best skill in this game. So, we're just going to do this, the ancient art of winging it. And that is fine. Be aware that I think, uh, although aimport selection usually targets mainframes, they can go for other AI components, so it's not the best idea to put this right here. That's fine. We'll just do that. So, now we have this. And I'm going to double check the firing restrictions on these weapons because I don't believe they have any. They don't. So this is a good idea to... In fact, I should probably demonstrate why that's a good idea. If you do not have these, you'll notice that the cram cannon now is stuck. And if I go the other way... Blah, you'll notice that the APS gun is stuck. In order to stop weapons doing that, you have to set firing restrictions on them. And you have to set them both on whatever a firing piece is on the main gun. And the turret they're on as well. So what I usually do if the thing's pointing forward, set uh, the minimum azimuth to minus 160, set the maximum to uh, 160. What that means is that there's a nice 40 degree gap in the back, or is it 20? I don't remember. I think, yeah, it is a 20 degree gap, and that will not turn in that direction, and thus it won't get stuck on the superstructure or anything else for that matter. And same down here on the turret, here, 160, 160, and you can blow up the marker size, and you want uh, the pointy bits to be both pointing in the direction you want the gun to aim at, so it's got that large angle uh, in front of the gun, in front and behind actually, where it will aim, and got this narrow little thing uh, pointed towards the back, where it will not aim. Cool. And for guns facing the other way, you have to not do that, because if you just do this, uh, it is oriented towards the front of the boat. So see, now it's going to aim in exactly the wrong direction, so you just uh, flip as of constraints. And now it's completely wrong. And then you just uh, do the opposite. So, uh, it's, uh, if front is minus 160 to 160, so this is minus 20 to 20. Look at that. We've got that 40 degree angle pointing back again. And now we can do the same up here on the firing piece. So, uh, nope, 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 bad. Minus 20, 20, flip as it was constraints. And flipping azimuth constraints is also something you can do when the thing orientating uh, 
uh, weapons on the side of your craft, so... What's the term? These things are mounted spinally. I've forgotten what the term is for things mounted non-spinally. Okay, so we've got a bit of a jaunty lean, and that's because we've got stuff on top. And let's save our craft again. Please don't crash on me, game. I don't know. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And let's just spawn in a marauder. So now we're aiming. And missing horribly. And watch the Marauder kill us in one hit. Or not. Huh. This thing can beat a Marauder when it's not finished yet. Interesting. And our ammo consumption is great by the looks of it. And that is because... Oh, yes. Cool! This thing is actually not doing too badly, It's and it's still quite cheap, despite the fact it has a big, uh, well, two big guns and a missile on it. Huh. Fun. Cool, cool! This thing likes to blow things up, that's very nice. The accuracy on this is terrible, so... While I lengthen the gun, because... Ah, right, I forgot to read some stuff of detection. So, concerning detection, there's a number of things. There's different kinds of detection. There's radar, there's sonar, visual, and IR. So, radar is good at picking up things, uh, uh, how far away things are. So, the range error is quite low. So, bearing, range, uh, detection per second, those are all things you have to keep in mind. Basically, radar is good at th uh, spotting things from range. Uh, cameras are good at telling the bearing of something. So look over here, the bearing error of uh, a gimbal tracker, a camera gimbal tracker, is very, very low. It's 0 0.05 degrees. And it's just uh, regular cameras are even, are well, not actually that much worse. The range is awful, so cameras are very bad at telling how far away things are. And there's not many detections per second. And radar is about the same. A sonar is basically the same as radar, but underwater. And IR makes lots of detections per second, but it's got pretty horrible range. And the bearing isn't as good as radar. So, so range error in that. That's actually that's quite good at bearing, really. Bearing, lousy range. Interesting. Do, 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 do. Huh. Really should, maybe I should start using IR cameras. They tend to be quite bad. Then you have you have trackers and stuff. So laser rangefinder trackers, best uh, range detection of anything. That gets blocked by smoke. Then you have passive sensors. So passive radars detect uh, active radar signatures. So from the 360 and 90 degree radar, and I think also from the gimbal trackers, passive sonar does the same with sonar, and retroreflection sensors do that when detecting cameras. So they detect 360 cameras, 90 degree cameras, uh, gimbal uh, camera trackers, and I think also the telescope. And then wireless snoopers just detects uh, wireless communication, uh, wireless links. So whenever you have one of these things on your craft, uh, wireless receiver. Uh, receiving signals from a wireless transmitter, the wireless snooper can detect that. So, if you want a stealthy craft, don't use wireless transmitters or receivers because they can be detected that way. This kind of looks like a this turret looks a, like a butt from the front, actually. So, detection on the superstructure, good idea. It keeps it nice and safe. It keeps it above where enemies are likely to be shooting, and it's a nice elevated position. However, what I've done here is actually not a very good idea. Because uh, you want to spread this out, so ideally uh, the radar will be up here, there'll be some uh, other detection down here, there'll be some on the front and some on the back, and just spreading it out so it can't all get wiped out at once, because as it is right now, just one lucky shot will blind this craft completely, so this isn't fantastic. 
uh, keep that in mind. So, what else, what else? I think we're on to propulsion, but before I do that, I'm going to make this cram cannon more accurate, because cram cannons benefit from, from noodle barrels. One, two, three, four, five, and then lots of barrels. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Five, six. And there we go, that's better. Long barrel. I kind of hate that cram cannons need such long barrels and that the uh, barrel segments only come in one meter increments. That's quite annoying. Okay, but I believe we are on to uh, propulsion, which is... Oh, come on, save better than that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're on to propulsion balancing, which is one of the most annoying things in this game if you want to do it properly. And by properly, I mean without PIDs and all that stuff. So, uh... First things first, you need to get the thing steady in the water, and you'll notice this thing has quite a jaunty lean on it. So let's find the center of mass. We want the center of mass to be as low as possible, and putting a great big gun on the center of mass, probably not my best idea. And so we're gonna stick some lead on here. Do, 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 do. Thankfully, lead comes in various different things now. Now... So one, two, three, and dead beam. Oh. Good, good, good. So already that's making it a little bit more steady. Let's spread that out a bit. And boom, boom. And we're going to do this. And we'll put some light on the subject so we can see what we're doing. I left a hole in my ship. How silly of me. Whoop. So now this thing should be a wee bit more steady. So where's our center of mass now? It is a little lower. We could drop that a bit more. In fact, let's do that. So we go here. Two. Hopefully this doesn't make it too heavy. Took a long time. Not that you fool. Two. Two, two. Lead. I have not used lead on any craft for a very long time. I just, I just haven't. It's a, uh, it's a uh, interesting. I outgrew lead a bit. I discovered the wonderful joys of uh, ACB controlled props. And by props, I mean propellers, not props as in what you need for theater. How's that center of mass? Center of mass is pretty low. So hopefully that'll stay like that. So, center of mass is something you need to keep in mind. Please don't sink, sir. You'll make me very sad. Is... Okay, so center of mass is needs to be quite low, and you need to find the center of drag. So, you press... Ah, shakes. I don't know what key this is. Uh, backslash? Uh, left leaning backslash or straight line? The thing just above the enter key? Do that, and then you find the drag line. So, drag is quite low, so... Where you see it, like that, that's where you want your props to be. So, we're going to prop some props here, huge fellas. One, two, three, and... Are we tipping horribly out of the water? No, we're not. We are motoring along quite well. Uh, stop moving for a second. Now, also, you have to line up. And I'm going to do... This now to line up a rudder. So, one, two, three, four, and just for giggles. I've given this thing a duck butt. Uh, duck butts are not necessary, but they are fun. So now, if I do this, let's see if it tips over horribly. Ayo, it does not tip over horribly. It's in fact motoring along quite well. Look at you. While it's doing that, let's uh, let's uh, fix it a little bit. So let's 
uh, swap this out with uh, good looking slopes. Because I like slopes. Let's do the bottom, some slopes. Actually, you know what we should do? We should put some more armor on this. I'm just going to cover the sides with wood. Uh, with wood. Eh. So we've got a layer of metal in there. And we're going to hide it behind some wood. It's not the best armor scheme, but uh, this thing is rolling mostly on the fact it's very cheap. So you could have dozens of these. They're very expendable. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. And hit fill. And hit fill. Look at us. And right here, right now, is basically a complete craft. I mean, it moves, it can fight. It can do all that stuff. It's got a tail. Uh, not the sexiest tail, I will admit. I should round that out a bit. But uh, this is a great chance for me to talk about uh, one of my favorite, and I guess one of the most important things for uh, craft, and that is combat testing. So I get, uh, I look at a lot of craft, uh, even though I've stopped taking submissions for subscriber craft view. I do see lots of craft here, there, and everywhere, and one of the most recurring things I notice is that you spawn in a craft for, uh, you just spawn it against something to, just to fight it, and you wonder whether anyone's actually tested it, so combat testing is essential for any kind of craft you care to name. There we go, we have to, we've got a nice rounded bum, it's a lot better. Combat testing is essential, so in this particular case we're going to throw uh, this little guy against the Marauder again. So like so, I've forgotten what broadside settings I put on this thing. And so, here's how I combat test this. So, what I do is I don't spawn it on my team. I'm just going to spawn it, let's spawn it against a Kalmar. I want, actually no, not the Kalmar, I want Jacob's Delight, because uh, the Jacob's Delight is actually about as scary as easy, uh, what you call it, a uh, deep water guard craft tend to be. Which way is it facing? It is facing north. I'm gonna go way over here. I'm gonna point my craft here. I'm going to spawn in the basic boat, and I don't spawn it on my team. So, just so you know what I do, I uh, spawn the two craft I'm going to test. Uh, they're 1,500 meters away from each other, facing head-on. And the reason for that is, even with broads, I want to see if a craft is a broadsider, I want to see how fast it can get into its broadside and stay there. And if it's a frontsider, I want to see that it can stay there, that it can stay in its preferred position. And always test your craft from a position of weakness, because that way you can immediately spot any weaknesses they have. Uh, there's a number of craft that I've gotten off the workshop and from people where if you don't where if you spawn them in a way that They're not supposed to fight in they can't right themselves That's a problem always make it so your craft can like fix their own position if they have to so here's combat test number one basic boat And immediately we need a firing uh, delay on that thing, on the cram cannon. So we're already losing blocks, which is not great. So 99% already, and pretty even, actually. Actually, nope, not even at all anymore. Okay, so the basic boat is brawling with something that is about twice as expensive, is it? Incidentally, I have a habit of not watching my craft when this happens. So how are we doing here? Not great. The armor is less than ideal. And this, see, this is what I mean. That is Fragments that did that, because the bloody Jacob's Delight 
has frags on it. It has frag weapons. So what that means is either we need to move a lot faster, which is what I'm going to do actually, or we need more active defenses, or we need... Oh no. Oh no. That is very irritating. So I'm just going to replace these things with light alloy because light alloy works pretty well for superstructure because it's light so it doesn't make you top heavy and it's also pretty durable it is much more durable than wood so let's do that let's do that excuse you and let's do this let's do this 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 again. And this. Ah, uh, no. Okay, so slightly tougher up here. not fantastic and let's put a firing delay on this thing oh right I didn't even also set the required accuracy I can't believe I forgot that I have seen fairly often in subscribe craft review people forget to set this this is critical because the default accuracy is horrible and for cram cannons you need to do this well you need to do that with most weapons actually here we're just gonna go oh I did it with this one why didn't I do it with the other one how annoying and let's jam some more props on the back here so with props you can stack them so here we're now going to get cunning we're going to do this and get rid of you get rid of you so whoop and then see how the props overlap this is a very good trick it allows you to jam extra props onto your craft which is very nice. So if I tell you to go, like stink, uh, spawn room marauder. Uh, uh oh. You'll notice the cram cannon actually did something that time. What are you doing? Oh, your AI did. Huh. How simple and easy and wonderful was that? Uh, keep going. Actually, how fast are you moving now? You are going at a beautiful 20 meters per second. And also, we need more armor on you, so. Do, 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 do. Actually, we need more armor all over you. Hum. So, what we can do, because I don't want to put more armor on this than I absolutely have to. I'm going to start talking about active defenses, because active defenses are the name of the game in From the Depths, except for the fact that From the Depths is actually the name of the game. So, what are active defenses? So, I will put them in order of being written in here. So, first we have LAMS, so Laser Anti-Munition Defense. This is the LAMS node as representing LAMS. You have Countermeasures, as regarded by... Re regarded... <laughs> represented by... This missile controller, this medium launcher, and this medium gantry. So here's a sticky flare, that is countermeasures. And shields, which is represented by uh, the shield itself. Whoop. And a uh, sea whiz, which, which I guess can be represented by this gun right here. So what does all this mean? So active defenses are things that require either power or ammunition or to run in order to work so lambs require power shields require power uh, countermeasures require well missile countermeasures at least require ammunition and sewers close in weapon defense by which specifically i mean aps guns rigged to shoot at missiles they require ammunition as well so to start off with lambs uh lambs won't work very well on this craft because it's uh not very big. We don't have room for lambs here. Or do we? 
We do, actually. So let's uh, try and rig this thing up with a lamp system. It is not going to work very well, I hasten to uh, say immediately. So we're going to put two incredibly tiny little lamp systems in here. That's probably going to overheat the engine and cause it to explode. So, right here, a uh, lamp system starts with the uh, multi-purpose laser, because it's a laser system. So here, and then we have a coupler, and we're going to stick uh, one Q-switch on here. Actually, there is a bug that uh, uh, has it that... Uh, uh, you've put four Q-switches on a uh, multi-person laser. It actually uses less energy than uh, three Q-switches, two Q-switches, or one, or even no Q-switches. So I'm just going to do this for now. This is going to be a pair, actually, of very crappy lambs. Uh, they get, are a lot better when they're big. So then, the coupler, we are going to add a cavity, like so. We are going to put a storage cavity on this. Boop. And then we're going to put some pumps on here. So, the pump is here, 3 meter pump. And these require 300 power each. So, one pump requires 100, these things require 300. We don't actually have enough for that, so we're going to do this, 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 and this. Ideally, use the 3 meter pumps, more space efficient. And so what have we got here? We got, for now we're just going to use uh, with no Q switches, so you can see what we're on about. And then you can stick a transceiver like so, and then have another transceiver, or you can just use, because when you use transceivers, it works something like this. You have them pointing at each other, and the laser can be connected straight through blocks, which means you don't need to do what I'm about to do, which is, this which was completely unnecessary so here we have where is it here then we're gonna do this and then in order for these things to acquire a target and fire at it they need to uh, have munition warners so we are going to just uh, stick some munition warners right here and one and do I could have dropped that a bit lower. In fact, I'm going to. Don't worry, I'm going to cover everything. Oh yeah, I should mention as well that uh, laser smoke defense also counts as active defenses, but that is specifically for lasers. So what happens is it works the same way munition warners do. Laser warner detects a laser shooting at your craft and will trigger smoke dispensers that are on your craft as well, thus shrouding your craft in smoke and stopping the laser from ruining your life. Lasers tend to ruin my life anyway because that is how life works. So here we go, here we go, and we're just going to uh, cover up that little wireless thing. Go here, 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 okay. So now, what we have here, it's got two little lambs nodes on it. And they have a range of 500 meters, so not great. And what we're going to do is spawn in a tiny thing. Uh, actually, I'll spawn in one of my old aircraft, just to show you what these things work. Th this lamp system is not going to work at all, it is way too small. So, I'm going to spawn in aircraft, this thing. So, this is a tiny little missile arm thing. I think it fires only one missile at a time. Yep, there it is. Is my tiny lamp system going to work at all? Nope. No, it is not. <laughs> so that's a continuous lambs, and it doesn't work very well. But you can trick these out with... Uh, what do you call it? Q-switches. Uh, 
should have had mirror mode. I don't know why I didn't. Also, that's a helpful thing right there. Do 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 do. Oh, here it comes again. Is my new improved laser gonna do something? Ah, 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 yep. Nope. <laughs> so, lambs are very, very strong, but not when they're this small, so it's not gonna work with this particular craft right here. So, I'm about to undo all my good work right here. And get rid of these things. But that's basically how you set up lambs. You just need to get them a bit bigger than this. And... Excuse you. Can you not? I'm busy. Ahem! <sighs> do, 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 do. So lambs does not work for the craft this size, so what's next on the list? So, what we can use instead is countermeasures. So countermeasures are beautifully easy to set up. In fact, I'm going to do that right now by hiding it inside this thing. Oh no, I made the rudder fall off, I did. I'm just going to have to replace that rudder right now, aren't I? Boop. So right here, I'm going to stick this. And this is uh, one of the older uh, decoys I have made. And this little system right here, I will show it off like so, it is a missile system. So it's got a missile controller, it's got a staggered fire, which you don't always need, and it's got an automated control block. And this activates or fires that missile controller if there are missiles detected within 2000 meters. So you need munition warners for this to work. So. Minimum value 0, max value 2000, specifically missiles, so not uh, missiles or torpedoes or torpedoes, missiles specifically. And the action is fire weapons within a range of 3 meters, so it's only firing this one. And uh, small launch, uh, small missiles don't really do the trick anymore, they used to, and it was fantastic. And this particular case, you don't need radar boys, you need radar target simulators. So let's spawn in our little friend, the Kiowa, one more time. Yeah. Do, 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 do. And you'll notice that uh, those decoys fail to do anything. In fact, I do believe that that just wiped out, yep, that wiped out all my darn senses. So I'm just going to uh, quickly do this now. Combat test! Always combat test. One, two, three. Search protectors are fantastic. They stop EMP ruining your life. Never leave home without them. So small decoys, they suck. They do not work very well. So instead, what we're going to do is make a horribly ugly uh, little medium gantry. And what this is, is going to have a two radar target simulators. And this has a signal strength of 2000. It's much stronger than a... It's actually 10 times stronger than a small missile decoy. And this thing is not going to uh, fling very well, so let's see. Nope, that didn't fling very well at all. So, we need an ejector on that. Do, do. Boop. Let's try that again. Do, 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 test. Whee! And one thing you can do, and I only relearned this the other day, is that you can check uh, how your craft is detected. Middle mouse button. So here, enable viewing of detection. So I want to see radar. So radar is 2,500 meters. So this decoy actually isn't going to be uh, good enough, I think. But we'll give it a go anyway. 
So where is our friend the Kiowa? The friend the Kiowa is over here. I should also mention as well that lambs these days actually work better on advanced, big advanced cannon shells than they do on crams or missiles. That's just uh, how the cookie crumbles, really. Okay, this is your chance, little decoy. Ah, see? Still not strong enough. Well, So now there's two things we can do, and what I'm gonna do is the dumb one, which is pop another one on here. So, radar target simulator, radar target simulator. This now has a max radar simulator signal strength of 4,000. So if we activate that again, that's twice that. So this should work now. And if it doesn't work, I will eat my hat. Actually, I won't eat my hat. My hat is quite new and also it's probably not very tasty. Do 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 do. There we go. Is you working? Yep, there we go. And with that, uh Oh dear. Spoke too soon. Yeah, I don't think the Kiowa is gonna get caught by anything this little boat has. Boop. So that is countermeasures, and they work quite well on small craft with limited uh, radar or heat signatures. And shields! Now! Now, now, now. Shields are a bugger because... And if I get a shield right now, first things first. Shields have, well, the From the Depths development has not been kind to shields. Uh, for one thing, they are blatantly unfinished. Also, that countermeasure just failed to work completely. How dare you. So... Shields, this is how they work. They project a flat thing, a flat energy thing that stops shells and only shells from getting at your craft. And this graph right here is uh, flickering horribly and that's uh, not great. So if I do this now, stop flickering please. Should be larger than 1.1, so 2, 2. Can this stop flickering? That's driving me crazy. So, disruption. There's uh, three kinds of shields. Disrupt. So what disrupt does is that... Well, it says right here. It disrupts the path of projectiles. The larger the angle of incidence, the larger the deflection will be. Increased power to further decrease the deflections. The higher the impact speed on the projectile on the shield, the larger the deviation corrected. Okay, so... That's how that works. Reflect is almost the same thing. A chance to... A chance, emphasis, to ricochet... Projectors away increases with angle of instance and increased power. The faster the impact speed of the projectile on the shield, the larger the chance of reflection. This is a chance of failing, and probability of total reflection versus incidence angle means that lower power shields have a very low chance of doing anything at all, which is sucks. And laser absorb is a different piece entirely. The graph vanishes, absorbs a fraction of all incoming laser damage at equal cost to battery power. The equation for absorption to fraction is that horrible list of numbers. Battery has enough, doesn't have enough energy, then the shield does nothing. Blah 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 blah. Current absorber fraction is currently very low, so this is terrible. So if we go to reflect now, this increases with that until you get to strength 10. It's still not great. So the power use is 20 when it is this small. But if you go here, and anything below strength 1 stops working. So. Strength 1, and say width is 10, and 10. So this thing is a very not good shield, and, well, basically, I wouldn't bother with shields right now. Anything below shield strength 5 is kind of a waste of time, because that's the strength 5 is just there. Like, almost at... God, I don't even know this. So this is the angle, this is the probability, so hits at a 90 degree angle, it's a rough below 50% chance that it gets reflected, which is awful. It is really shitty because, uh, pardon my language, because simply because of how many shells uh, craft can spit out, there's a summer guaranteed to get through. Disrupt angle versus incident angle. Uh, do 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 do. 
Yeah, our shields are not in a good place right now, so I wouldn't bother with them at all. And last but not least, SeaWiz. Uh, let's see if I can't uh, rig this thing up uh, briefly. So let's save this guy right here. Where are you? Ships, prototypes, save over basic. But. So this thing is already. Uh, there's a number of things to do here. Firstly, we're going to replace this with an anti missile cannon controller. And secondly, we're going to go mess with uh, the shells this thing fires because there's a number of uh, things to make these things work as uh, brain just died. As a cannon based missile defense, one is a timed fuse, and the other is either HE or even better, a flak warhead. So, 500 millimeters is a bit overkill. The best kind of gauge for this is about 400. Because that way you can jam this into... Well, you could almost jam this into a belt loader. So now we have that, and now we will stick a timed fuse on this. So, you need a laser targeter in order to have this thing work. And it goes right here. The peg goes there. And so now, what we have is a little seawiz thing. And I'm going to deactivate uh, this thing, just temporarily. So, disable movement. And we're going to spawn in... Uh, what are we going to spawn in? We're going to spawn in the Kaio again, just for giggles. Oh, please hurry up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. So you notice that... Uh, this gun back here isn't firing. Now it is. Right there, it just managed to pop a missile. Didn't pop it first, so you want a better rate of fire on that. Let's do that again. Kiowa, are you firing again? There you go. Actually, I think flak damage on missiles has been nerfed quite a- What are you doing? Why are you running away in a straight line? Dude, really? That's weird. Also, I forgot how slow these missiles are. I'm sorry for wasting your life. Come on, big gun. That didn't work well. But you get the idea. That you can have guns shoot down missiles in this game. It's pretty sweet. Do-do-do-do-do. Do-do-do-do-do. Do 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 wrong folder. There we go. Not great talents. My team. Do now. So that's active defenses, uh, or a very very brief overview of them. Did the countermeasure work? Yes, it did. Blip. Okay, so that is a boat that has a missile countermeasure. Does not have any shields. But, uh, that's okay. It's very cheap, and it's mostly for demonstration purposes. And, what else? So, the final touches to a craft, once you've done all that stuff. Uh, material storage and repair bots. So, let's just add some material storage and some repair bots. So, I'm going to stick them right here, where I stuck the ill-fated lambs earlier. So, material storage is just going to go right here storage. Now, here's the thing. If you play on centralized resources as opposed to localized resources in the campaign, arguably you don't need these at all. But in the designer, it is a helpful thing for two reasons. Firstly, it gives you an idea of how much materials your craft needs in a fight. Because when you're testing it, you can see how much uh, material your craft is using. And that's basically it, really. And also, if you ever decide to play on localized... I oh, know, you don't need to uh, add material storage. 
in case you like it. And there's lots of aesthetic uh, choices for material storage, including coal, which looks pretty... Well, that doesn't look too bad. And so I'm just going to stick uh, two repair bots in here. So if you go to Misk, repair bot, not the tactical mook. Also repair tentacle? Huh. So repair tentacles, repair other craft, repair bots, repair your craft. And I'm going to stick two repair bots on here, which is probably plenty for a craft the side because they repair quite quickly. And infamously, when I first started my... Uh, Quest for Nita playthrough, I relied on repair bots too much. It's a common rookie mistake. Do not rely on repairs for the durability of your graph. It'll eat all your money. So, uh, between 1 to 5 is usually enough for any craft, because ideally you want uh, your armor and your active defenses to uh, keep your craft alive as much as possible. And repairs, and the repair bots are just there to repair the craft in between fights and to just, I don't know, repair the odd block that gets knocked off. Okay. And, yeah, active defense is just better than more repair bots. It's cheaper, it's faster, it's more effective. And fast repair, so if you go really nuts with repair bots, firstly, that's expensive, because each repair bot is 50 bucks each. This, essentially what happens is that if you repair too fast in a battle, what happens is that you keep repairing the same block over and over. So say, uh, this block gets shot off, and then it gets repaired, and then it gets shot off again. That's not helping a lot. It's just, it's a huge waste of money, and I found that out the hard way. So, yeah. That's basically it for this little basic craft. I'm just going to pop a slope right here. Do, 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 do. And triangle corners, and another slope, and more triangle corners, and then I'm going to save. This thing has a lot of materials. So that's basically it, really. So it's how it's well. That's a, that's a basic boat. I like that. Let's uh, let's sport in an airship, and hopefully the Nessie doesn't destroy this thing utterly, because that'll be embarrassing. Where? Ah, let's get on the boat. Did I not? Whoa, what happened here? Ah, that was recoil. Ah! On proper cinematic angle. So there, that's a basic boat. 33k. And, uh, I don't know, pretty good for its cost, I'd say. And it's like, has a lot of gun on it. So, thank you all so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And I'll see you next time in From the Depths. I hope this, uh, Little walkthrough thing was helpful. Hope it was educational. Hope it was fun. See you next time. Farewell.